Alright, I want to give you guys a quick look at some of my cutting tools and why I carry them. And we're not just going to look at cutting tools, but other things I carry along with them. For instance, like sharpeners and a shovel. And I'll explain why I carry those items. Um, first, I want to look at the things that are not cutting tools. Okay, first we're going to look at some sharpeners. Okay, this is a piece of stone. Okay, notice there's a piece of coarse grit and then fine grit. Okay. What you need to do is you need to spit on this, and I'm going to use one of my just everyday knives here to show you how you would use these. Okay, you'd spit on this, and you're going to take it in a circular motion, okay, like that right there. Get your angle, find your angle, okay, and just work it. Work that tip good, work this good. When you're done there, you're going to come over here and you're going to work this side. You're going to smooth it out. Just like the thing you get with your knife set in your kitchen. It's a long metal rod that's used for just smoothing out that edge. Okay, getting rid of that grit on your blade. Okay, now, I don't carry that one in the woods with me. This is what I carry in the woods. This is a diamond sharpener. Okay, same type thing, but you're going to go in a motion like this. You can do this right here. Okay. These are great sharpeners. Lansky's makes a good one. This one's a Smith's, I believe. Yeah, this is Smith's. They've been around since it says 1886. Okay. Now you can take this out. And you have a whole flat surface right here. You got a round surface right here with an insert right here. Okay. There's there's different different edges to work with here okay I usually just use this because it works well if I ever need more or a nice flat surface I got one right here okay so that's that's what I use for sharpeners now it's important to have something like this because blades dull you can use a piece of flint if it's in your area you're really not going to find anything in Florida if if you're one of my viewers from Florida um, down there it's pretty tough to find anything that's going to sharpen your blade so it's important to have one of these and a stone if you're going to be in Florida and you should have them anywhere because it's good to keep your knives in check before you go out I want to go over this guy okay just a pair of vice grips this is a little sheath I made out of a piece of felt and some of that rubber rubber backing Okay, I carry three different jigsaw blades. Okay. Vice grips, three blades. I don't have to go buy a folding saw that takes up a lot of room. This is versatile. I can use this for so many different things. And I've seen uh, Dave Canterbury talk about someone mentioning to remove this and put an O-ring in there. And... I am going to do that. I just haven't found one that fits yet, and that's awesome because you can tie, you can tie a lanyard to it. You can hook it on your belt. You can always have this on you. So, hook it to your carabiner, whatever. But this here is a finer toothed for wood cutting. This is a um, more coarse tooth for wood cutting, like bigger things. Okay, and this is probably what. Nine, ten inches long, right there. And then I have a uh, uh, bit for cutting metal. Okay, you see them small teeth there, just like a hacksaw. Now what it does, it's almost made for it. It fits in there perfect. You just clamp that right in there, and that little notch. Okay, you see that right here? This little notch. Just clamp that back in there. Clamp down tight. She's in there solid. That is what I use to carry with me to cut. These little blades, you can get a whole bunch of them for like 10 bucks. Get yourself a good one. Okay, it's a great little tool to have. It works well for me. And that's going to save you from using up calories, chopping away with your knife or with your hatchet or whatever you got. 
and it's an inexpensive item to replace if you need to. Next I wanted to look at this. This is called a survival card. Not a bad thing to have. Okay, it uh, it has some some unique features to it. You know, of course, it's got your bottle opener, lanyard hole, can opener. This is a wire stripper. This is a like a universal wrench slot. You can I don't know what is that up to. Maybe a little under a half inch, I'd say, right there. And this here is for uh, grid plotting, which is awesome to have. You always have it. It's in metal. It's not paper. It's not going to wear out. You got a ruler that goes to two inches, so you can just use that for grid plotting. You have two screwdrivers. You have a large flathead and a small flathead. You have a blade right here on this corner. This, this corner and this corner, all the way to right here, is a blade. So, oh yeah, and I should go over the Solus tape, which is a uh, reflective tape that can be used for, um, it's, it's meant for out at sea, but you can use it on land. I don't see why not. It's just something to signal with. It may help you. It's not huge. It's not a big piece of solace tape, but it's something. And on the back, it actually has SOS codes. SOS and help. Okay, take a look at that. Now, this is by Michael Hawk. I actually bought a few of his products because he has great products. They're awesome. And that's why I wanted to show you this. It's a, uh, a really nice piece that I just added to my kit. I will be carrying this with me. It's nothing. It weighs nothing. It's strong. It's got a blade on it. The more, the more blade you have, the better. Okay, so you can see what size it is. Now, I carry probably maybe three knives on me if I'm going to stay out for a while. One of these, they're cheap. They're not strong. It's nothing special. But what do I use this for? Flaying fish. Okay. Using a bit one of your big bushcraft knives, they just don't work so well. This right here will flay a fish. If you can't get through the bone, grab your pocket knife. Cut the bone. It's a nice little knife. It's light, it's small. I keep it in my small kit. I have a waterproof kit, which I'll go over sometime here and show you everything I carry in it. Next, I'll show you another Michael Hawk product. This is my folding knife. Now, you can buy all sorts of folding knives, and there's a lot of good ones out there. There's some that are better for whittling, but this works quite well. It's, uh, it's a pretty awesome knife. It's strong. I beat it up pretty good. Um, the only downfall I found is it's not that good for a ferro rod. Your, your back's not as straight but I mean if you wanted to you could grind this down and fix that but I'm not gonna do that because I have other things that I always have I always have a multi-tool on me which I'll show you next that uh, works just fine for that but I love knives that click in place and stay in place and then I'm not gonna cut my finger on and he Michael Hulk added these right here finger guards okay so if I'm cutting my finger is not going to slip up here and slice this. You just, when you're out in the bush, it just, it just makes things worse when you cut yourself. You know, I, I know a lot of medicinals out there, but it's still something I don't want to deal with. But uh, I have to say, these knives are awesome. You see how his blade has that curve? It just makes it better for cutting. You know, if you're going to make feather sticks or anything, it's just a great knife. Okay, this is on me at all times. This will always come out there with me. This is a great little knife. I love it. I love these finger guards. He was talking how emergency, emergency personnel use these and they save their fingers a lot. And that's awesome. I love these little things. And I love how I can tighten them down good with an Allen wrench. I can keep this thing maintained. It's a good solid knife. Just works well. It's always good to have a multi-tool. Now I don't recommend you get a cheap one like this. This is all I have right now. Uh, I will be purchasing a Leatherman because I'm about products that are bulletproof but sometimes you have to start small. Um, but any multi-tool is good to have 
because it gives you multifunctionality with tools. Okay, you have more options when you run into something. Okay, pliers, good thing to have. I have my vice grips if these fail. Okay, you got multiple tools you can use. Okay, this is what's going to save your your bushcraft knife from chewing it up if you want to uh, strike the ferro rod. Okay, you got screwdrivers, you got a saw, you've got an awl, you've got a can opener, Phillips screwdriver, serrated edge. You got multiple things to work with here. So it's always good to have a good multi-tool. It's good to have an awl, it's good to have a saw, it's good to have a couple blades. I'm not big on serrated blades, but it's alright to have one on your multi-tool. Because they do come in handy sometimes. But uh, I recommend Leatherman, or a good multi-tool, something strong. I've broke probably three of these things already. And uh, that's why I'm just going to invest in a good one now. But I just always got these just so I had one. So, grab yourself a multi-tool. Okay, next I wanted to go over something that I feel is super important. I'm saving the good stuff for last, by the way. This is called a gardening knife. Yes, something you would probably see your mother with outside. Why do I carry this? Because it's important if you need to dig a Dakota fire pit, if you need to um, dig a smoker, which I'm going to do a video on a really cool smoker. Um, this will help you dig post holes for putting saplings in the ground to make a shelter. This is a great little knife. And what it does is saves the edge of your blade. Because in Florida, I got away with using a plastic, sh one of them plastic orange shovels. You've probably seen one. You can't do that here. There's roots everywhere. There's big trees. You've got saplings growing out of the ground all over the place. So if you plan on digging, and I mean, you're digging through rock. This thing will do it. This is carbon steel. Okay. It's coated with carbon, I believe, actually. But this right here is awesome for just getting through roots. You just put that right on a root and just push down and it cuts it. It's got a sharper edge right here. That's not knife sharp, but it's sharper. You got a serrated edge here so for cutting through tough spots. So you want to dig your hole out. You just take this thing, work your way around. Boom, you got a hole. It works very, very well. It's strong. I mean, this thing is strong, strong. I'm very pleased with it. Um, I also have, other than that one, I do have your military folding shovel. Okay. You just unscrew it, get it there. It's a great shovel. Screw this down tight. Okay, they're durable. There's a place around here that uh, gets all the National Guard supplies off the Air Force Base and National Guard products. They get all that stuff and then they resell it. So I am there all the time, and that is where I got this. This is a great shovel, it's strong, but I don't carry this nearly as much as I do this. Because this is smaller, it gets the job done. However this, if I'm going to stay out there for a long time, I may just bring this. Because, and this, I'm just talking camping, if I'm out doing survival, I'm not going to bring any of it. Because that's what makes you adapt better to your surroundings. Is bringing nothing. But if you're out to enjoy yourself or shoot some video or whatever the case may be, it's a great little tool to carry. You're going on a hunting trip, this is a great tool. You know, you got all this and it folds up pretty compact. You just unscrew this, just like that. Okay, see that? Folds in nice. You can even screw this back up and tighten it back up, but you don't have to. Stick it back in your pouch. Okay, here's your pouch. This here is a tool my buddy made me. I love it. This is a fire hardened piece of hickory. I believe is what he told me it was, was hickory. Which is a hard wood. 
and it's not sharp. But if you can, try to guess the reasons that you would use this. There's multiple. Okay, one would be to hide a deer. This is great for taking the hide off a deer. Okay, you could easily just stick this in, go down. Why is this better than a knife? Because a knife's going to cut into your hide. If you're trying to preserve that hide and you don't want to ruin it, here's your solution. Okay, what else can you use it for? You want to make some bark backpacks, strip some bark. Right here's your solution. This thing's lightweight, it weighs nothing, takes up no room. Little paracord lanyard he put on there. And it's fire hardened, it's strong as a rock. Okay, this is a great little tool, I love it. You can easily go make yourself one. Just go find yourself a piece of hickory, a piece of oak. Um, any of that wood will be fine. Just find yourself some hard wood. Down in Florida, grab some live oak. That's the hardest wood you can find in North America. This here, just a Winchester buck knife. Okay, stainless steel. Not big on stainless steel, but this here is just my, my beater knife. I did put a, a little tile for my neck. Now, see how I tied that? I'm not a fan of it. I don't like the way I tied this. And I'll show you my other neck knife and why I like it better. But this knife, it's good. If, it's good to have a knife that you're not going to um, use as your pride and joy, I guess. It's good to have one that you're going to beat up. And this is that knife. This is what I use for stuff around the house. If I'm going to go practice something, test it. This is a knife that gets that job. Okay, I don't like to ruin my good knives. I like to keep them for when I need them. I still practice with them. But uh, it's good to have a knife like this. And it's a fixed blade. I'm big on fixed blades. But like I said, stainless steel is my least favorite. There's different hardnesses you can get for stainless steel too. So be sure if you get a stainless steel to check the hardness. Now next I want to show you this neck knife. The sheath my wife got me. This is a custom made leather sheath. I want to show you this just because it's cool. Maybe you can make one. Look at the detail on that. It's handmade. Every little bit of it. It's a beautiful sheath. The edges are nice and smoothed out. It's got his initials right there on the back. I have no idea who it was, and she doesn't either. She just got it from her work. But the knife I carry in it is a Colt throwing knife. Now, a lot of people may be like, why would you carry a throwing knife? Well, because there's a few different reasons. It's got two edges. Okay. I can obviously use it as a knife, which is ideal. It's a cutting tool. It goes around my neck. And I can use this as a weapon. I can throw this thing and stick it in a tree from, you know, 15 feet away. And it's, it's pretty hard to become good at this. It takes a lot of practice. You know, you can, you can hold the knife like this. You can hold it at the bottom. You can hold it at the tip. There's multiple ways to hold it. And maybe I'll do a video on throwing this in the tomahawk. Um... But in my opinion, this is a great thing to have, not just because I can throw it and it's on my neck and I can just grab it, boom, throw it. That could be for protection or for securing meat sources. If you're good enough with it, you don't want to go throwing this at anything because it's, it's not ethical to just injure something. This is for survival. If you were in that situation, anything that helps you. Okay. But this here, if you can look at that, it looks like a spear tip. So, essentially what I have at all times in bear country and where there are mountain lions, people say, oh, they're not here no more, but I spoke with the locals and they're still here. They hear them all the time. This is protection. If I go out there on a long hike by myself or even with someone, I can tie this to a nice piece of hardwood and essentially I have something to keep me and that predator distance from each other okay you go poking a bear in the eyes with this he's gonna run away okay he's not gonna like that so this gives you something
to protect yourself with. All right, that's why I carry this with me. It's it's and I like to throw knives. It's a fun skill to learn, and it's a hard skill to learn. I'm nowhere near a master at it, but it's something to keep practicing at. And like I said, I found more than one use for it. Now, like I said, on this neck knife, this is how I like to tie them. Okay, this is essentially a surgeon's knot tied off down here. What I did is I tied one end of the surgeon's knot and then I twisted the line to give myself some sort of surface area and comfort for my neck because that other one had the knot right here and it just rubs on the back of my neck and I don't like it. So if you know what a surgeon's knot or a blood knot is essentially what you would do is you would pull these and they would tighten up and sear right in the middle which is what that other neck knife is but this one I tied them off I tied them off here and here after I twisted all the way around then I tied this one off so they won't pull together okay so maybe you can play around with that and try to figure out how I did that or I can shoot a video on my I'm gonna shoot a video on knots maybe I'll try to remember to throw that in there how I did that but this came out pretty good for me it's comfortable and you get more cordage if you ever need cordage but this thing here slides in there nice and perfect and gives me a nice neck knife to carry with me and protection. Next is a knife you've seen in most of my videos. This is a uh, US Marine Corps replica of a K-Bar. Okay, This is what they carried. It's just the replica. It's carbon steel. I've had this knife forever. Probably used it Someone just asked me on my channel what this knife was, and I told them I probably used this for five years in Michigan, and I used it for four years in Florida. I beat this knife. Silly. Okay, it's a great knife. I'll never say anything bad about K-Bar. They're not expensive, and they're reliable. Okay, they're carbon steel. Now, why carbon steel versus stainless? Because it works better to make a spark. If you need to make a spark on flint and steel, this is going to work good for you and it's stronger okay so get yourself one of these if you're looking for your first bushcraft knife I recommend this right here if you can't spend three hundred dollars on a knife or two hundred dollars on a knife go for the k-bar you can find one for sometimes under a hundred okay they're not they're not overpriced at all now this thing also on the bottom you can use that as a hammer. Works very well. I have beat this thing so bad, and it's still. You can see there's there's no looseness. That blade is still solid. I don't know what I did in some of my videos in Florida, but I'm sure you've seen me beat it up pretty good. I have sharpened this thing with carbon, or with uh, not carbon. I sharpened this thing with carbide, which. I'm sure you've heard it. My ring is made of tungsten carbide. I can't wear white gold because I would destroy it. It would be it would be destroyed in a matter of a week. So I got tungsten carbide. I could sharpen my knife with this ring. This is a hard, hard, hard metal. And my grandpa, he had a uh, big bar of tungsten carbide. And it was just real sharp at the edge and it just shaves this off. So I put a serious grind on this thing and made it like a razor blade. It's awesome. That's why you see all that right there where I grinded it down. That's why that's there. Now this thing works great with the ferro rod, which you've seen in my bow drill video in South Florida. It's just it's lightweight. It's not too big. You know, here's my hand. Okay, that's what you're looking at. And it comes with a leather sheath. You got your lanyard. Okay, tie that off around your weight and around your leg. You stuff this thing right in your pocket. I did that sometimes too. It's a great knife. Another Michael Hawk product. Uh, he went to Topps Knives. Topps Knives are great. They make awesome products. This is the uh, Michael Hawk's Hellion Survivor 2020. Okay, great knife. I'm not even kidding you. This is an awesome knife. You got a saw on the back, which I've tested, and it works well. It has, I mean, you can see right here, four, one, 
two, three, four blades. This one gets dull, I can go to this one. This one gets dull, I can go to this one, or this one. I'm always going to have them, okay? So, this, this knife is so strong. You could, I think Michael Hawk made the claim that he wanted a knife where he could stick it in the side of a mountain and hang from it and know that it's not going to break. Which is why they made it out of spring steel. This is carbon spring steel. So picture what your truck is held up off the ground with. And that's what this knife is made out of. It is a little bit heavier. I think it's a pound. But, I mean, it ain't enough to make me not want it. You can get his smaller version. But uh, I'd recommend this one for these kinds of woods. Because this is hardwood country. The mountains have a lot of hardwoods. You're dealing with a lot of uh, a lot of thickets. And this thing can essentially be used like a machete. That blade is long. Let me just compare it quick. Okay. Bottom to bottom. That's the difference. You got a good two and a half inches longer from the K-Bar that I carry. What else does this have? Finger guard right there, which I love. Bow drill bearing block, which is great because that's just another thing you don't have to make. Because we all know it's calories in, calories out. And if you have to go find a piece of hardwood too to make a bearing block, it's just more calories you gotta expel. Okay? This is great for down south in Florida. I'm no longer in oyster country, but this is an oyster opener. I guess I could open up some mollusks and stuff that I find in streams here. Maybe do a demonstration on that. But uh, if you're down there and you need a good knife right here, this will open your oysters for you. That's what it's for. Okay, so this knife, my car to handle. This stuff's like bulletproof. Not going to break. It's, it's just all around solid. Okay, you got a double lanyard hole. So you can strip your paracord or your bank line or whatever you got through there. Okay, and you can also use this edge here as a hammer if you had to. Now I'd recommend putting the sheath on before you do that. But uh, it can be used as that. It's strong enough. So the sheath itself. Now I saw Joseph Teddy made this uh, spec, what is it, Spectac 7. It's a similar knife, but it's missing a few of these features. So I do go with this knife over his, but there's nothing wrong with his knife. It's a great knife. And I do believe they stopped making this. You'll have to check on Topps Knives to see if they still make it. Because they may not make it anymore. But it also has an extra pouch in here for you. Okay. They give you a little whistle. Okay. There's a little whistle in there. Yeah, you can see it right there, a little piece of plastic, it's just a whistle. Not too much in my hands. But I stick another one of these little guys. This is a smaller version of that one. Okay, why not? It's easy to put in there. I could put more things in here. There's room for, for plenty in there. I could stick a small compass. I could stick um, some type of tinder. You know, some waterproof tinder in there. I mean, you just, just think outside the box, and you can think of things to put in there. You could put all your essentials in there, what you need. A um, piece of snare wire. You can use your lanyard as cordage, because everyone knows with paracord, there's seven strands in there. And that same blood knot I was just talking about, or surgeon's knot, you can use the time all together and have a long piece of cordage. Okay, so this year is a great knife for me. <laughs> I'm happy with it this year. Just a machete. That's all it is. It's nothing fancy. Stainless steel. Okay. It's just a machete. Uh, I'd like to get a better one down the road. I've tested this one and it has not broke on me yet, but I fear that this may break if I use it too much. Because it's all you know when you when you use the machete, a lot of times you'll chop and then you'll chop up here and you'll pop a piece out. 
And if your machete breaks doing that, you have a junky one. But nah, I didn't spend a lot of money on this. But I thought it would come in handy here and there. I've really never had too much use for it. Now that I have this, I feel like that'll take care of a lot of my problems. But I do have this if I ever go into a situation on a hunting trip or something where I'll need a machete, I got one. And I've used it. As you can see, the blade's a little chewed up. I have used this thing. And it has not broke or dented whatsoever. Could use a better sheath. You know, it's just a flimsy little piece of nylon. I feel like I could cut with this thing with a, like a makeshift leather backing. So, that's the machete that I carry. And you can put mods on machetes and put a whole bunch of stuff on there, but I'm not going to waste my time until I get something that I know will last me. The last thing I'm going to go over is this. The SOG. This is the uh, Tomahawk here. There's, a, there's many reasons I love this thing. You can throw this one after another and stick it. Boom, 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 boom. It's a great throwing hawk. So it can be used as a weapon. You can use it to secure food. You can use it to as a pickaxe if you're climbing. This will help you climb. Uh, this thing is sharper than a razor blade. I mean, that is sharp. That's how it came. They're inexpensive. You're not going to spend hundreds of dollars like on some hickory-handled tomahawks. I'm all about something that's going to last me. And then I'm going to get the most bang for my buck. Okay, sometimes, like this top knife here, that, had, that cost me more money. But I got something that's going to last me a lifetime. This cost me not very much money, but it's going to last me a long time. So sometimes you can get the cheap stuff for good. Sometimes you have to get the expensive stuff for good. And that's where you just got to look out. And that's kind of why I wanted to shoot this video. Now right here, you can see that rough spot. It's got one on each side. That's for a hammer. I actually used it to pound this stick that I'm holding my camera on here that I keep bumping into. Uh, it's, a, it's a great hammer. I've used this thing quite a bit. It chops wood like you wouldn't believe. It's light. It's not heavy. And it goes with me. If I'm going to go out and I'm going to be burning some wood and I need to chop something down, this is going to come with me. 